first. We finally made it to Caravan Rebot. It's pretty lively here. So, just past this wall is the desert, huh? Oh, wow. Paimon remembers hearing people call this the Wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of Greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Huh? Over here. What the... Where did he go? Ugh, how did we lose him? They were just here a second ago. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Ugh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. There's no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really get by on a scare, I'll hate them. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Port Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait, don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders! Oh, so you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Oh, right, um... You do have a point. <laughs> I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days, you're more fascinating than anything the sages can offer. Hmm, not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the divine knowledge capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you. And upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? I'll hate them. You really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? So that's your answer. <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go! Before us lies Aru Village. The safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, 
This landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out! Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamacha's wrath? Oh, Haytham. Do not think you can escape my judgment just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? Had I used my full strength, not even this traveler would have been able to stop me. Though styled like an assassination, I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra, as well you know. Seemed to me more like your own personal touch. Haytham? Did you call him General Mahamatra? Yes. General Mahamatra Sino. Head of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter, and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in all Haytham, to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. Has Alhatham done something wrong? Hyman doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. I won't waste my breath explaining things. Alhatham. I saw it during our fight. Take it out. The Divine Knowledge Capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes Amatra's senses. Wait! The Divine Knowledge Capsule? Didn't it fall into the Matra's hands in Port Ormo? No wonder you speak with such confidence, Sino. But I must admit, I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra of the Academia, are you all alone in the desert? As far as I'm aware, the other Matra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's, let's say, morally dubious? If I was the real target of your mission, what was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the Academia? <sighs> I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. You two! Ugh. What should we do, Traveler? Paimon feels like we can't trust either of them! Ahem. <clears throat> well, look at you two, acting all tough and self-righteous over there. Yeah, sure looks that way. Two giants from the Academia duking it out once and for all. Not something you get to see every day, that's for sure. Listen, 
I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality and lord your empty rules and virtues over each other. But how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru village? It seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. <sighs> hear a word I just said? Whoa, what's going on? The wind's so strong! Is this a sandstorm? Paimon's gonna get blown away! Ch another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! We have to take cover! Sounded like Candace. Ugh, come on, you two. Jeez, are all of you academia folks such hard work? Move it! All right, stop yelling. <laughs> Wanna play sardines with three people who wanna tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun! Uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. My sincere apologies, everyone. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. Please, let me introduce myself. I am Candace, protector of Aru Village. Savior has come at last! Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. Wow. She's so gentle and caring. Like a nice older sister. Unlike those guys over there. All right. Now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility to protect my fellow villagers from harm, I was observing your conflict from afar, even before the sandstorm started. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility to make absolutely sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. So please, have an honest and sincere conversation with one another, and put your hostile feelings to rest. If anyone dares to start anything again while they are under this roof, I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the Sandstorm. Oh! Uh, on second thought, Paima may have misjudged Candace's character. Hm. And that goes for you too, Miss Dia. Do I make myself clear? <sighs> All right, we got it, Candace. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? I was supposed to be a mediator, but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved just now. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. Wait, that was you trying to be a mediator? <sighs> I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. While all Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts, it's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. Huh? Exile yourself? A little while ago, I discovered that there was data missing in the Academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. 
As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. I began to realize that they were cautious of me from the very beginning. Unsurprisingly, the Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. You have no right to judge us. Hmm. So they really are up to no good. I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the academia of today. I believed it would be wise to flee the academia before the sages had a chance to take action against me. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Sino seems to have the same goal as us. We're all investigating the sages. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. Well, Sino... If that's your story, then why did you see I'll hate them as a target? When I was investigating the matter in the academia, I overheard a conversation between all Haytham and a sage. The sages asked you to investigate a blonde-haired traveler. Do you dispute this, all Haytham? Uh, what? Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. Hmm. <laughs> yes. I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. I'll hate them! After all, the promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The Sage told me, once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of divine knowledge. A most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contained one key piece of information. Namely, that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. From my perspective, the sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So, I began my own investigation following the lead of the divine knowledge capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Ainul Ahmar mercenary, incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean... That the Sages originally planned to dispose of you, using one of those capsules that drive people insane? I'd already given up on the assignment by then. I only told the Academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences. Even though I ran into the Traveler by chance, I had no intention of providing assistance to the Academia. Also, you should remember, you were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern.
true. Oh, he's some help to sell at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. I'm willing to apologize if that's worth anything to you. I took the Divine Knowledge Capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. You should be well aware, Scribe Alhatham, that curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the Sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the Academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, I won't regard you as an enemy, for now. As you wish. Mm-hmm. Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. And now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. Oh, sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. Ahem. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru Village for a visit. I was actually looking forward to a pretty exciting time getting back together with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. It ticked me off, and things went downhill from there. Is that all? Well, I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, welcome back, dear. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. <laughs> No need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. C creatures In the sandstorm? Uh, are you sure you don't want some backup? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. You needn't worry. Yeah. Just leave him to Candace. <laughs> Don't worry, she's as tough as they come. Owens died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she alright? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. Alright, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor. Oh, Candace, you're still fighting? You've been out here dealing with these creatures the entire time? Yes. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you then. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! Stabilize! I will have order! <laughs> Creatures stopped appearing. Was that the last of them? What we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Huh? Who are you? Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. 
Sir, I am also originally from the desert, but I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common, uh, but recently the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensol. Hmm. Another effect of Ermensol's withering. So, Ermensol's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermensol. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermensol's present state. <sighs> Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Does your curiosity know no bounds? Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars exiled here by the Academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity after a period of training in the Avidia Forest. The Academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will, but if you are guilty, I will eliminate you, regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. I'll be grateful for the assistance. <sighs> no doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. Although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the Mad Scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, 
like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the village keepers. The soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm... What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too! Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the Mad Scholars continued to wear their Akasha Terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Oh, no wonder! Everything makes sense then! Add in the fact that they calmed down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. What? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Ruka Devata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida definitely exists! She's a... How should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise, even if she says weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals, so I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes... <laughs> I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think, our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. All right, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. But easier said than done, especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. <sighs> The person you're referring to is not a local, yet you are. Why do you call him Grandpa? Grandpa is just Grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I want to find my Grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah. So you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was, but I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa, 
Ethan wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid. All he wants is to find his grandpa. Let's find a way to help him. Sorry, I was only listening in because I wanted to know where Grandpa went. Honest, if you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. Is this what all the Matra are like? Ah, you're back already. We just wanted to confirm something with you. Do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> I had a feeling he'd go looking for you. Huh? You knew this would happen? Yes. Although he tried his best to stay hidden, I still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window. He really wants to get his grandfather back. Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft-mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his grandpa again, only to realize his grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, Want me to take you somewhere fun, or... Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Hmm. Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Sino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Isak's behalf, Sino. It's you guys! We've cleared everything up! Let's go find your grandpa! Really? Wow! Thank you so much! Yeah! Alright. 
Let's ask the local residents some questions first. Yeah. 